All right, so this is Atomic Forms. Um, it's a React form with data collection and validation. We built this because we were doing a lot of forms in React, so we wanted a, a quick way to build a form, do some validation on it, gather up all the data, and then maybe dispatch an action with it. Um, so I'm just going to run through how to get started uh, with Atomic Forms, getting set up, and some of the syntax that comes with it. So, uh, of course, this is through NPM. Um, you can find it on npm npmjs.com. So what's it look like? Um, the first thing we have is uh, one of the, the features we wanted to do with Atomic Forms is that a lot of times when you have a form, you have some, some kind of initial data that you want to populate your form with, say they're editing a form. Um, so in our state, we just set it up so that our initial data is this right here. And I'm going to just come back to that in a minute. But let's move on. I'm going to go straight down into the render here. So the first thing we do is we import um, atomic form from atomic form, and then we can create one of the components. And one of the things we decided to do with atomic form is build forms in such a way that you can just code normal forms like you would in HTML, but add a few uh, bells and whistles to make it work. So you'll notice that we have an atomic form. We gave it a ref uh, main form. This is kind of optional, and I'll tell you why. Um, we give it our initial data, so it comes from the state. And then we have a do submit callback, as well as an after validation callback. And I'm going to get on onto those. But let's look at this form here for a minute. So uh, we just have a few rows just for some, just to show you that it could be inside of a, an, an in, sorry, inside of many divs, um, or you can do it down the tree as far as you want. But what it looks for when it goes to validate or when it's gathering up data is it first looks for um, anything with a ref. So in this example, we have an email ref, a password ref, and a confirmed password. And the second thing it looks for is with those refs, does it have a value? So if I was going to select this DOM node by this dot refs dot email, and then if I check if it has a dot value, um, it would pass true or false. And if it does, then we gather it up. And we also look for this validate. So when we call, um, when, when we hit submit here, the form already knows how to do uh, all this validation here. So it's going to go through, it looks for all these refs, and then it's going to call validate on all of them. And inside validate, we have a message and a validate. Um, it's inside of a hash here. And the message is if it fails. So in this case, we check is email. And then we say, OK, if it's not an email, um, we give it the message must be about email. And the way this works here, this is email, it's kind of magical, but it actually comes from validator. So we integrated validator. It's an, another NPM um, package here that allows for a few validations. And pretty much anything inside of validator down here will work with atomic forms. Um, so in this case, we are using, we, we can use anything here, like is email, is date, um, those are some popular ones, is Boolean, stuff like that, or is credit card. Um, that stuff will work inside of here. Uh, but the cool thing with this is that sometimes with validation, you don't want to just check as email. You want to make sure that it's a certain length or um, other words, other types of validation. So you can also pass in multiple uh, validations. So we have an array here. Starts right there, ends there. You just put a comma there, and you can you can add multiple validations. And uh, what's cool is I'll show you the after validation callback. But when it calls validate, anything that fails, it's going to pass back an array of these messages for us, so that we could display those to the user. So we'll come back to that in just a minute. So I just want to touch on the, these few validations down here. So we have is length, and then we actually pass an arg to five to that. So if we look at validator, is length requires an argument of how long does length need to be? Well, we, we specify five, and then we spit out the message if it's not. Um, additionally, we decided with validation, sometimes you have like a password, and then you want to do a confirmed password fill. Um, and you need to make sure these two match. 
So a quick way you could do that is the validate object. You can write your own functions, and this will work. So the first thing is the value gets passed in, and then the form data actually gets passed in. So this allows you to do something like val equal equals form data dot password. So this this actual input field will check against this password field here. Um, so let's look at the after validation now. So on submit, um, it's going to do it's going to go and validate all that, and after validation gets called. Um, basically if the form fails to validate. So this is after validation here, and it has a form validations parameter. And so when it fails, we, we call this dot set state validations form validations. And then if you notice down in our, our uh, render here, we call this dot validate message email. And this is just a shortcut for us to go to validation message. We pass in the field. Um, we check if we have a validations and if that field exists in that, that hash or array. Um, then we check, is it valid? If it's not valid, um, we map the messages. So that's that array of messages I was, I was talking about. And we just give it a span message. So then we have a bunch of spans of message and we just set that in our render here. So um, that's our quick way of just showing like, oh, this failed. Uh, here's the messages of why. So the second thing is the do submit. Um, so if a form doesn't fail to validate, so it's all valid, checks out, um, it's going to cause call this do submit callback that we specified when we created the component. Um, so inside of do submit, we just uh, we have a form data parameter, and we're just doing an action, and we call register, and we pass a user object, and you can call just form data email. And this is the ref that came from the inputs here. So that's how you can pick it up. Um, a few other features that are kind of useful is uh, if you want while a user is typing into a form to validate it while they're typing, um, maybe do some animation with it, you can do a on change callback and then do this dot on input change. And this is where the, the ref becomes important because we're going to call this.ref.main form inside. So right here we have our on input change and we're going to go our form data equals this.refs.main form dot form data. This is actually going to call the um, to gather up all the form data from the form. Uh, this is how we can call that method. And then this is going to get our form validations. We just pass form data into the main form validate form method. And then from there, we can set the state to the form validations. So this is a really powerful way that we can do validations while the user is inputting data. Um, so that's kind of the, the start of atomic forms. It's just a really powerful way to create forms in React. Um, does anyone have any questions? Um, I don't think so, but this looks really sweet. So thanks for showing it. I guess maybe one would be, would it be possible to move the um, the validation messages? Is that what the method's called in the example? <clears throat> validation message right there. Mm -hmm. um, would it make sense to move that into the library so that you could just quickly call to say, give me a, you know, give me all the messages and just output them into my form? Yeah, that's definitely something I'll probably consider putting into the actual package itself. Um, the reason I, I like it outside, perhaps, is that you can customize this, say, if you wanted to change how this looks. But maybe what I'll do is just have an override, and then you could just do a prop inside of here. Um, and saying that, you can also, there's a bunch of overrides inside of Atomic Forms. Um, I have yet to document this, but... If you wanted to override like the, the get state of atomic forms or the update form data, which is uh, basically how the form gets all the DOM nodes and updates the values, uh, there's a few in here that you can override. So I'll, I'll definitely consider that. That would be a good change. So. Okay. Excellent. This looks great. All right. Thank you. Thanks for showing it.